Wednesday night, the hungry crowd. You guys hungry for the Word of God? All right, well, y'all get excited and give God some praise as I welcome up Bishop Tony Samuels to bring the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Sound like y'all are ready. Amen. Well, tonight, you know, I always pray before I act, before I minister. I ask the Lord, what would He have me to minister? And uh, tonight, I'm going to be ministering on obedience, the blessing connection. Obedience, the blessing connection. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I just thank you uh, tonight for the awesome opportunity to minister Your Word. And uh, Father, I ask that You will give me Your words, Your words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, God, I ask that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. And Father, God, I pray that the body of Christ here at the Lighthouse be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like never before. Father, I pray it not just be information, but an impartation of your spirit. Father, God, I pray for illumination to come as I minister the word. Uh, Father, God, that you would just give your people insight that they would see um, how you see obedience, Father God, that it's a connection into the very realm of the blessings of God. So, Father God, I just thank you for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, say amen. amen. Now, before I start, when I talk about obedience, I'm not talking about a man thing. All right? I'm talking about a God thing. How many people know if you don't see God in your Christianity, it'll always be easy for flesh to take you out? The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That when you walk in the reverential fear of God, amen, you can take a licking and keep on ticking, amen, because you are always mindful of the presence of Almighty God in your life, amen? So when I talk about obedience, I'm not talking about obedience um, to appease men. I'm talking about obedience to, uh, to, uh, out of our love and worship for God. I heard Sarah talking about um, uh, God told her to worship. Guess what the highest form of worship is? Obedience. The Bible says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. God is not only concerned what we do on stage, he's concerned about what we do when we come off the stage. That, amen, I'm a sacrifice, I'm an I'm a instrument of worship with my very life to Almighty God. But when I talk about obedience tonight, listen, I'm not talking about this uh, fleshly thing to get people to be obedient to man, amen. Our obedience is ultimately to Almighty God. When you understand that, you can submit to leaders that don't got it all together. Because my submission is not into insanity, it's showing my faith and my trust in Almighty God, amen? I'm seeing beyond your defects and your shortcomings, and I'm doing what God would have me to do, and that's to be obedient, amen? So obedience will activate the blessings of God in your life. Pull up Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. The Bible says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. So the Bible telling you right there that the prerequisite for blessings is obedience, that bl blessings follow a life of obedience. Curses, bad stuff, rough stuff follow a life of disobedience. Do I have any witnesses in the house? When you are disobedient in your life, doing the wrong thing, a bunch of wrong stuff followed you. 
But when you begin to do the right thing in life, opportunities begin to chase you down. You begin to get favor with man. All kinds of doors begin to open. Amen. When you begin to do the right thing. We even learned that before we became Christians. When I was on my game, not drinking, showing up to work, doing the right thing, promotion was coming into my life. Amen. But the minute I started not doing the right thing, amen, I started losing in life. The first study I had as a Christian, when I first came into the faith home, there was a 30-day orientation class. And the or, yep, 30 days orientation. We filled you out for 30 days to see if you really wanted to do this. So you had to go through a 30-day orientation before the clock even started. Look at y'all, y'all, the faith, the guy's like, oh, we need to bring that back. So we can filter out the, who's real and who's not, amen? My God, we got to do all this paperwork and you walk out the door the next day? Oh, my God, I thought you was ready, amen? But anyways, we would do a 30-day orientation, amen? And the classes that were, my first class was obedience to God. I think they slipped it in the regular curriculum now, but it was an orientation class. And I think Bishop said it like that. We're going to get this obedience thing in your brain, amen, before we release you into the general population of the student body, amen? So we began to learn about obedience to God, amen, and what it meant to be obedience to God. And we began to realize that all uh, humanity and the mess that we're going through right now was all because of one man's action of disobedience to the law of God. Don't touch that tree, Adam. Adam touched it, and now we got the mess in the world right now because of one man's disobedience. And if you get back into obedience, you can connect back to the blessing of God. You can connect back to the Garden of Eden in your life, and things will start going better for your life when you become obedient amen and then we learned about obedience to man amen that it's not just good enough to be obedient to God but you got to be obedient to man because God uses man on the earth amen you can't say you're obedient to God and not obedient to man that's your own theology that's your own doctrine that's not according to the word of God amen but it's obedient to God and obedience to man amen God bless you. Empower to prosper. I believe that this set the foundation for my Christian life. I can honestly say that my life has always been better when I've been walking in uh, obedience versus disobedience. And let me tell you something, guys. It ain't all been smooth sailing for me. I was a Jonah. God said, go here. I went the other way. Guess what I ran into? Storms. The storms of life, amen, nothing worked, amen, outside of the will of God for my life. And I remember going through a two-year season living in disobedience and nothing ever worked for my life, amen. And finally, God used it to push me back into his will, back into obedience, and the blessings have not stopped since, amen, when I got back into obedience. We have to be careful that we don't complicate the foundational truths of what it means to be a Christian. Pull up 2 Corinthians 11.3. Paul said, I'm afraid that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by his cunning, your minds may be corrupted and led away from the simplicity of your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. I think a lot of people comp complicate Christianity. It's not complicated. God is looking for obedience. Amen? His relationship will always lead you into obedience. The Bible says, let everything be done in decency and in order. Amen? So if you're in relationship with God, the first thing he's going to do is put your life back in order. And putting it back in order means you need to be obedient. That means you need to stop listening to yourself. You not start need to start listening to somebody, amen, that can speak into your life. Amen? And things will start going better when we become obedient. But sometimes we begin to complicate the things of God and come up with these strange doctrines. And God is saying, I'm just looking for a simple 
obedience, amen? And then we can begin to build your life. But if I can't trust you to do what I say, even when it makes no sense, how can we go any further in your life? Pull up Ecclesiastes out of the Amplified 12, 13. Solomon said, when all has been heard, the end of the matter is fear God, worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is almighty God and keep his commandments for this applies to every person. This was King Solomon's conclusion of life after having it all, doing it all, losing it all. He finally said, my God, just be obedient to God. Just worship God. Your life will see me so it's not in the money. It's not in the glitz. It's not in the glam. Amen. That's all. What do he say? That's vanity, vanity, vanity. That's all vanity. That's, that's here one day, gone the next day. It's empty. It's not fulfilling. Just be obedient to God. That's the conclusion to the whole matter of life. That is the duty of man to be obedient to Almighty God. Look at your neighbor. I'm about to get in obedience. I think the word obedience has gotten a bad rap because of the grace message. But kingdom grace is connected to kingdom obedience. Pull up Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And in John 1, 17, uh, Jesus said, for the law was given, John said, the law was given by Moses, by, but grace and truth came by Jesus. It was the grace of God that brought salvation into our lives. But then God's grace brings us into God's truth that keeps us living in true freedom and blessing. Amen? So God's grace is not for you just to go haywire. God's grace empowers you to live a godly life. God's grace empowers you to live in obedience. Amen. It's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by the grace of God that you're able to be obedient to God. The same grace that saved you will be the same grace that keeps you in obedience to almighty God. You just got to submit to the grace of God and don't submit to your flesh. Don't submit to your thinking and submit to the grace and power of of almighty God and let him walk it out through you but I'm walking in obedience by the grace of God do I get attacked to not be obedient absolutely amen but I submit to the grace of God God I need your power to stay in your will even though the winds are blowing and stuff is in my mind I'm going to stay in your will and I know that there's a keeping power in my life on my life to keep me in the will of God for my life amen, amen. see a lot of times we just give in to the flesh we just give in to our thinking we don't we don't we don't we don't we don't uh, 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 lock into this thing man Man, I've seen somebody leaving the faith home today. I'm like, where are they going? Where are you going? God didn't bring you here to walk down the street. God brought you here when you leave the drive out of this place, amen, into your own place, amen. That is not the will of God for you to walk down the street, amen. You're going backwards, amen. You missed the whole thing. You, you left before your package arrived. What kind of glory does that give to God walking down the street? Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't walking down no street no more. I'm driving, amen. I ain't hitchhiking. I'm driving, amen. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it, amen. If I stay in obedience, the blessing of God is going to make me into the man that God will make you into the woman that God has called you to be, amen. You can let God make you. Stop trying to make yourself. 
We don't sit under God long enough. The Bible says humble yourself under the hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Sometimes we don't wait on God. We don't let God exalt us. We want to exalt ourselves. But you got to go through seasons sometimes of submitting under the hand of God. Amen. And let God exalt you. Because when God exalts you, ain't no devil in hell can remove you. See, you know, when God puts you in position, you can be bold. You don't have to fear no man. God put me here, amen. If I'm going to be out, man, God's going to move me out, amen. It won't be by the arm of flesh because it was the arm of the spirit that put me in position. So grace will empower you to walk in God's truth. Question, do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be prosperous? Do you want to be favored by God? Then you're going to have to walk in obedience. Pull up Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient. Somebody say, they ain't just obedience. That's talking about your attitude. If you're willing, how many people know you can be obedient and not willing? <laughs> I'm going to do it because I have to do it. I got to do it. Amen. I got to just fall in rain, but I really don't want to do it. No, God said, I want you to be willing and obedient. But then he says, if you do it, you will eat the good of the land. See, when I was running around on drugs and alcohol all crazy, I was not eating the good of the land. How many people know I'm in the same city I used to get high in? I'm in the same city I used to run crazy in. But now I'm eating the good of the land, amen, of the same land I used to get arrested in, messed up in. But now because of my obedience to God, now I'm reaping the good of the land, amen? Same land, uh, uh, different do, different actions, and reaping different outcomes. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Somebody say, if, if, uh, if, if Pastor Tony can't teach you, life will teach you. If you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Amen. Don't worry about hard-headed people. Let them go. Amen. Let them bump their head and that thing will bring them to humility. Then they'll come back willing and obedient. <laughs> Some of y'all like, that was me. I was hard-headed. Didn't want to listen. Didn't want nobody telling me what to do. Amen. I had to go out. Amen. I'm trying to prove everybody wrong, but I actually proved them all right. <laughs> my grandmother was right. My grandfather was right. My parents was right. Any person that ever told me to do the right thing was right. Amen. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Listen to this. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example. Don't follow crazy. You know, there's some people, amen, that will I got to mess with the faith home. Follow somebody in the faith home, and I tell them what to do, and they won't follow me. And they don't want to have no fruit in their life. And they'll follow crazy whether, rather than order. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God is the man or woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, or example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers and ridiculers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law and his precepts and teaching, he habitually meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted 
and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers and comes to maturity. This time it's going to be different. This time I'm going to finish it. This time it's coming to maturity. This time I'm not going to take a stupid pill. This time I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot. This time, amen, I'm going to reap the full package at this time. There are, there's a certain way that you have to walk to walk in the blessing. You have to watch out what counsel you're living by. Somebody say, watch out what counsel you are living by. You have to watch out what are your associations. Association brings a simulation. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals. You can be a good guy, you can be a good girl, but hanging around with a bad dude or a bad girl, you'll become corrupt, amen? You won't influence them, they'll end up influencing you, amen? You won't take them up, they'll, they'll actually take you down. So I got to watch out for my associations. I got to watch out for my counsel. I got to make sure that this person's walking in obedience to God. Amen. They're not just trying to hitchhike off of my life. They're not just trying to live off of my relationship with God. I got to make sure you got your own relationship with God. The counsel. Watch out. And watch out for those that mock righteousness. You know, some people come up in here and poo-poo the word of God. Are you out of your mind? The word of the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. The Bible says God is not going to be mocked. You're not going to say, I proved God wrong. I proved this word wrong. I went the opposite way of his word, and I still got blessed. You a liar. Amen. You will not prove the word of God wrong. Amen. You'll have to come back and say, God is right. Amen. I was wrong. A season of obedience will always be followed by a season of blessing. Some of y'all are in a, well, we're all in a season of obedience. Those, there's some people here that are on the, the, the first season of blessing. God's trying to set you up for your first season of blessing. You're just coming into the things of God. So God is building every day you get up and you make a decision to be obedient to God. You're sowing seeds of obedience and it's going to be followed by another season of obedience. Amen. I was blown away after my season of the faith home because I sold obedience. I sold my finances. I sold my life. And my God, when I got out, it was like days of heaven on earth in my life. Oh, my God, I didn't have to pay for nothing. God was doing supernatural miracles, ridiculous stuff that I was trying to do but couldn't do. But I began to just focus on obedience. And I, I went from a season of obedience into a season of blessings. Now I want to talk about the enemies of obedience. Some people are not obedient to God because they have trust issues. You can't be obedient to someone you don't trust. Pull up Proverbs 3 and 5. The Bible says, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions with all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Notice, it says to trust him completely. Some translations say, trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust him with every single detail of your life. Whether it's small detail or big details, you got to trust God completely. 
completely for you to walk in obedience to God. Because if there's an area of your life you're not trusting God, that's going to be the area the enemy comes to attack you in to get you into disobedience to God Almighty. He knows if who really believes God all the way. He can tell by your actions, by your responses. He knows if you're being obedient or disobedient in an area. And if he catches you being disobedient, that's where he's coming. I ain't trusting the Lord with my finances. Hmm. But God told me to stay on this job. Here come a dude in a suit. I got a deal for you. It's in another city, though. I'm going to triple your pay. If you don't trust God in that area, you're going to fall for the okie doke. You're going to uproot your family. You're going to go somewhere out of the will of God. And guess what's going to happen to that company? It's going to go under. They're going to give you a pink slip. It's not going to work out because it was just a trick. It was a trap to get you out of the will of God, to get you back into disobedience because the enemy knew that you didn't really trust God in that area. You praised about it. You declared about it. But really, your actions was telling another story. Trust completely with all your heart. Trust him with every single detail. First thing you got to realize when we talk about God and trust in him, God is not a man. Pull up Numbers 23 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? So the first thing you got to realize, wait a minute, God's not a man. And my trust issues are connected to men that let me down. My trust issues connected to a, a, a relationship that let me down. My trust issues are connected to a, 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 a opportunity that didn't work out the way I But wait a minute. I'm not dealing with men. I'm dealing with God. God is not a man. God can't lie. You know why he can't lie? Because everything God speaks is truth. If he says it and it may not look truth, it'll become truth. Amen. That's why God can come into your life when it looks ramshack and speak a prophetic word that's way beyond your life. Makes no sense. Looks ridiculous because he knows in his word there's a power to bring it to pass. Amen. The faith substance is in his word to make it a reality in, in, in your life. So listen, he can't lie. Amen. If God said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Amen. God ain't my buddy. God ain't that chick. God ain't that dude. God ain't none of them people. I'm not leaving the one that can't lie. This is, somebody said this is a guarantee. Your life is guaranteed to get better if you just stick with God. If you just be obedient to God. Give him a little time and let him work it out, amen. You'll come back with a testimony, amen. Well, listen, God is not going to lie. God is going to do you good and make you happy. God is going to bless you exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think. Amen. If you would just hold on to the word of God. Amen. Next one, you got to realize to trust God. God loves you. I said, wait a minute, God loves me. You know when I realized God loves me? When everybody left my life and God decided to step into my life. <laughs> when God cleaned me up, when everybody ran from the dirt. When God gave me favor, began to restore my life, restore my credit, restore my soul, restore my spirit, restore relationships, began to bless my life, I realized that God really loves me. You know when I realized God loves me? When I stepped out of the will of God and I thought it was over for my life and God still came into my life and said, it's not over for you. I've not forgotten about you. I knew you were going to do this and I've already made provision to bring you back into my will. I'm about to open up a door to bring you back to a place of obedience and blessings in your life. So I realized God loves me. Come tell me if I pick up the phone, I'll hang the phone up. 
But Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> Jesus said, son, I will never hang up on you. Amen. You are always welcome home at the Father's house. I got the robe. I got the ring. I got the celebration. I still got all these packages around here. I've been waiting on you to come to your senses. Pull up Romans 8.32. For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure. The gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. So God is saying, guys, I gave you my best on the front. A car? Are you serious? A piece of metal? I gave my son. You can't believe me for that. I gave my son, you can't believe me, for the right relationship. I gave you my son, you can't believe me for a job. I gave you my son, you can't believe I'm going to fix your credit. God's like, what I got to do, Pastor Tone, to them? To show them I love them. I'm for them, Amen. Next one, human reasoning. Enemies to obedience, human reasoning. Go to 1 Samuel 15, 2 and 3. This is the Lord speaking. He says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for them in the way, when he came up from Egypt, now go, he's talking to Saul, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Mm. Now this instruction of the Lord to Saul is very clear. There's no way you can error if you just be obedient to that word. Notice it said, destroy Amalek and all that they have. Now go to verses 8 and 9. It's a lengthy story, so I kind of broke it up a little bit. Here comes Saul. Here's, here's Saul. Somebody say, don't have Saul's obedience. Here's Saul's obedience. And he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep of the oxen of the fountain. That was their king, Agag. He saved the king, the best of the sheep, the oxen and the fatlands and the lambs. And all that was good and would not, wait, all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, that he utterly destroyed. Somebody say he had a pick and choose obedience. Nah, I'll keep that. Kill that. <laughs> I'll take that. Kill that. That ain't what he said. He said destroy it all. Saul did not fully obey the Lord. He kept the king alive. He kept the best of the sheep. Now listen to the Lord's response to Saul in verses 22 and 23. Actually, it's Samuel uh, correcting him. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What in the world? Do you really think that sacrifices is better than obeying the voice of God? 
Disobedience is rebellion to God. Listen to what the Bible says. Rebellion is the same thing as witchcraft. We think of witches. We think of black hat, you know, smoke, pot, you know, broom, stupid stuff. Amen. Hollywood. But listen, that ain't it. God said witchcraft is when you're in rebellion, when you're disobedient to God. Wait a minute. How did Satan get kicked out of heaven? The Bible says that there was a rebellion in heaven, that he said, I'm going to rise up against the Almighty. I'm going to be like God. Basically said, I ain't listening to God no more. I'm going to be my own God. And when you become rebellious and disobedient to God, you're virtually saying, God, you're not my God. I'm my own God. Because it said it says the sin of idolatry. Well, what's the idol? It's yourself. And sometimes we won't be obedient because we're still worshiping the idol of ourself. What I want to do, what I feel like, what's best for me. I got this. I, 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 I got him kicked out. So you, Lord said, do you, you think I care about you sacrificing these rams? Sometimes we have our own idea of how we're going to please God. And God said, I don't really need none of that. I just need you to get with the program and be obedient to my word and save your sacrifices. See, what it is, we, we put the, uh, the wrong thing first. Obedience is supposed to be first and then do your sacrifices. But don't try to use your sacrifices to cover up your disobedience. Look up here, sacrifice. But go right out the door and cut somebody out. Disobedience. Sacrifice. Disobedience. God said, no, be obedient before. Sometimes when you first come to church, sometimes you need to just sit down. I don't know nothing. I need to learn something. Amen. I don't need to be jumping all over the place. I need to sit down and learn how to be obedient to God. Because then I put myself on front street and I don't have a foundation and I get hit by the enemy and I get blown away. Because I don't have no roots in my walk. Somebody say human reasoning. It is the guillotine of faith. I looked up that word reasoning. It means a statement presented in justification or explanation of a belief or action. To think or argue in a logical manner, to think through logically as a problem. Somebody say that's interesting. So when somebody begins to reason, they become a, begin to come up with a justification for their actions, even though it's the wrong actions. And then it says they ought to think or argue in a logical manner. When human reasoning kicks in the light of the truth of God, it's a fancy way of saying that we are actually arguing with the truth. Human reasoning is a silent rebellion against the truth. Matter of fact, I'd rather somebody come straight out and say, I don't want to do this. I want to be disobedient. There's somebody that, that, that hides reasoning in their mind and the word of God is coming, but they're arguing with the truth, amen, and they really got a stronghold that's blocking them from the truth. It's a silent rebellion, but it blocks you from obedience to God. And sometimes you walk and you're like, something's off here. They're saying, yeah, 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 but some's tell me, no, there, there's something else contradicting that. But what is it? It's human reasoning. What's human reasoning based on? Logic. When in the world have you seen faith be logical? When in the world has faith become logical? Go and dip in that river seven times, you'll be healed. 
Peter, jump out the boat, walk on the water. That's defying all logic, so human reasoning will cancel the faith of God in your life and, and reduce miracles in your life because your reasoning and your logic will kick in. Why God had me leave this big church and come to the lighthouse? Don't get in the reasoning. There's a reason. There's a purpose. There's a plan. And don't get in the logic, and you'll receive the miracle that God's trying to do in your life. When human, let me say that again. When human reasoning kicks in, God says, do this, and then you're thinking about it. Well, kill all, all that? But man, look at them good little sheep. We could use those for the next sacrifice. And you're thinking, some, I remember they used to have a saying, you think long, and you think wrong. You think long, you think wrong when it comes to the obedience to God. Don't be thinking about it. Just do it. I was sharing with the staff. Somebody say servanthood. If you say you're called to serve, then that means you don't come with no reasoning. I got a stack of boxes right there. Hey, Pastor, I'm here to serve. Yeah, I need you to take those boxes and stack them in that corner. I don't need you to stop. Why is he stacking them there? Why did he stack them back there? And I'm coming out thinking the job is done, but now you're captive by your own human reasoning, and the job is not getting done because you're trying to figure out what only I know, the reason behind it. Somebody say, sometimes you're not going to have the reason behind what God is asking you to do. There's not always going to be a reason. If you need a reason, you really don't trust him. I need a reason why I got to do 18 months. I need a reason why I need to come to church. I need a reason. You don't need a reason. You need faith. <laughs> Saul felt that his actions were justified. Or should I say that he felt his plan was better than God's plan? Sometimes we're just crazy. Do we really think we are smarter than Almighty God? Little did he know that God knows the future and that this king that he chose to keep eventually got strong again and was able to regain his kingdom. And after Saul passed on, David had to deal with him. Remember the battle at Ziglag. The Bible says that when David came, the, the Amalekites, Burnt his whole camp down. God was trying to prevent a tragedy that was beyond Saul, and he needed Saul's complete obedience to do that. And sometimes we don't realize that our disobedience is not only affecting our lives, but is affecting future generations. Somebody say, stop thinking about yourself. If you think God saved you just for yourself, you don't know God. God has got in mind your, your brothers, your sisters, your mother. He wants to save your whole family. And he's banking on your obedience, your testimony. He's going to use to draw them in to the kingdom. We want to be selfish and just think about us and our ways and what we want to do and what makes sense to us. And we miss the miracle working power of Almighty God. Just be obedient. If I, listen, if I got caught in a human reason, I would not be here. Because my late bishop did stuff that I did not understand, did not make no sense to me. But, Tone, I need you to do this, do this. You got it. Yes, sir. That's it. They know, why are you doing that, Pastor? That don't make no sense to me. Guess what he would have said? Well, he, there would probably have been a rebuke, but he probably would have said, I don't even know why I'm doing it, but I got an unction inside telling me to do it. And if you trust the God in me, amen, we can join and take this thing. All right, bring it in for a landing. Well, I gave you all a lot to think about. <laughs> 
So his disobedience affected David's generation. Obedient people pass blessings down to the next generation. Everybody always talking about the, 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 the generational curse. Guess where a generational curse from comes from? That means there was disobedient parents, and they passed down a curse to their kids. What's going to break the curse? The obedience to the next generation. The curse is broken uh, for my son because of my obedience to God. He don't have to go through what I went through, amen, because the curse got broke with me. But if I went stupid and went back out into the world, that curse has legal right to continue down to the next generation. Last scripture, Romans 5, 19. Look at your name. Say, don't underestimate the power of one man's obedience. The Bible says, for as many by one man's disobedience, talking about Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, Jesus, many shall be made righteous. God said, I put it on Adam, he blew it. But I sent the last Adam in my son Jesus, and I said, son, if you can be obedient, I can take away the sinner curse, and I can pass on righteousness to all men. Notice, it wasn't easy because Jesus at one point said, father, try to take this cup. He said, I can't, son. All right. N nevertheless, not my will. I'm gonna, he basically said, I'm going to be obedient then. It's hard to be obedient right now, but everything is on me. All humanity's thinking about me. I see Pastor Tony in the future. If I don't do this, he gonna be the devil's gonna kill him. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be obedient. They're gonna write about me in Romans 5:19. And by one man's obedience, righteousness came to all of us. Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the Lord. Are oh, you kissing up to these people? No, I'm just being obedient to God. You're looking at people, I'm looking at God. My obedience is for God. I want to live in the blessing zone, amen? I got to get out of that curse. Hey Amen. I think I know everybody here, but just in case, is there anyone here tonight? You have never made a decision to accept Jesus, your Lord and Savior? Anybody? Anybody need to rededicate your life back to the Lord? If you're saved, raise your hand. Say, I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Full church saved. Bring some unsaved people. <laughs> we'll be talking about that at the beginning of the year. Amen. Amen. Have y'all been blessed? We're going to release you guys now, and uh, if you need any special prayer, the prayer team will be up here. If you need prayer, come on up. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for the grace, your grace, Father, your grace that saved us and your grace that is available us to help us, Father God, to walk in obedience to you. Father, we, we know that sometimes we'll miss it. You see, you even said a righteous man falls, but he gets back up, Father. Your grace picks us back up, Father God, so we continue in our race. So, Father God, I thank you that there's no condemnation. Maybe somebody's here and you fell. Listen, there's no condemnation. I remember the Lord told me, I'm not mad that you fell, but I'll be mad if you don't get back up and continue your walk. Amen? So let them continue their walk in Christ, Father God, and go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed. Come on up, prayer team.